Okay, so I'm with my dear friend Ben Jervie, a friend of Solar One uh, as well, who uh, helped us uh, organize Step It Up a while back. Former employee. Former employee of Solar One, of course, wrote lots of grants for us. So Ben has actually been here. Um, well, Ben, explain what you've been doing here. You've been in, uh, at uh, COP15 since day one. Yeah, I've been following the UNFCCC um, in person all the way since the Bangkok meetings in, uh, in September. Um, and have been following the proceedings uh, you know, virtually and online and through reports uh, for, for about a year now. Um, so through the bank, uh, Bangkok and Barcelona and now into Copenhagen meetings, I've been uh, there in person working for this um, Adopt a Negotiator campaign, part of the Tick, 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 uh, part of the Tick, Tick, Tick project. And um, you know, basically I've been tracking the, the U.S. position, the American position in these talks and, and reporting back uh, you know, to the civil society at home um, what the where we stand, what our position is. How close have you gotten? When you say you track them, are you are you in direct contact with them, or what's the? Uh, yeah, um, the, you know, Jonathan Pershing, the, the lead negotiator here uh, and throughout, is you know, knows me by name and by face, and you know, knows when to turn and avoid me, and knows when he wants to come over and and uh, you know, rap for a bit. So they. What do you think? Do they have a lot of reasons to turn and avoid you? What do you think of the general? The general. What? Are, what is? What are, what's? How would you characterize the, the U.S. position? Um, the U.S. position has been the negotiators here in particular have been in a difficult position. Um, you know, for for a long time now, we've been making up for you know eight years of inaction domestically. A lot has happened at home in the past year. An enormous amount has happened at home in the past year. But in the international arena, our position is still not as far along as really the entire rest of the world would like to see. Um, you know, just in terms of the, the two big factors being our, our uh, emissions reductions goals, short term and long term, and our, uh, the, the finance that we're going to provide for um, developing countries mitigation actions, but also for their uh, adaptation efforts as, as they deal with climate impacts. Okay, and now you've actually been inside of the Bella Center. People who have watched my little installments know that from day one I Hope to go in, but wasn't able to get in. And a lot of people have been sort of turned out. But Ben has been there every day except for today. So can you just tell us yeah. a little bit about what that? What was it like being inside the bubble there? It's funny. The environment inside, it's it, it's surreal. Uh, the, the whole UN process is a little surreal. But in the, the Bella Center itself, it's uh, it, there's definitely a disconnect from the real mayhem happening outside. It's it's, it's a different sort of mayhem. It's mm. It's, it's a kind of hurry up and wait atmosphere where you're constantly scurrying around to meetings that never begin on time, mm-hmm. um, are often suspended or postponed, and, um, and for all the action, all the energy, all the activity, there seems to be very little done at the end of every day. Yeah, your your G chat status for the last couple of days has been Nopenhagen. Um, so, what, what do you think here? Are we are we we've got a couple of days left? Does it look like we can expect anything fruitful to come out that? Uh, yeah, the I, the interesting thing I've seen develop over the past couple of days is that negotiators have been working for for two years, uh, really full time for one year in earnest, negotiating on you know through the UNFCCC process, uh, you know through the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, having these intersessional meetings, gathering, working through texts, developing texts, agreeing on them, negotiating on them uh, in the finer points, and that has all been leading up to this conference. Um, and what has resulted at this conference is really not very good right now. It's pretty ugly. It's, it's very simple. Um, it's been sort of the lowest common denominator has surfaced. And, uh, and then the other day, the Danish prime minister drops this new text basically out of the sky and says, this is what we're working for. Now, when you say text, what, are, what is it that's, you know, like there seems to be a bunch of texts that are floating around. So a bunch of different versions, I guess. Yeah, of what? different versions and different drafts for what the, the end treaty could look like or the end mm-hmm. agreement could look like, whether it's a legally binding international protocol or, or treaty. It would be different than a sort of, you know, politically binding handshake. Uh, Okay, so now let's say if nothing does really come out of Copenhagen, what do you think in terms of the movement seems to be larger than ever? Maybe that's just an impression that I get being on the inside here, but uh, it seems like there'll be a lot of energy even coming out. What do, you, what do you think the next 6 to 12 months will look like in terms of the climate movement if, if we don't get what we need out of uh, Copenhagen? Um, that's tough. To, I think no matter what we get out of Copenhagen, the job is really just starting. Um, I think we're going to have a sort of not yet, you know, not, not done yet message going forward. Because uh, what is going to come out of here ultimately is not going to um, 
just run the numbers, run the projections, it's not going to keep the world below 2 degrees Celsius warming, let alone 1.5 or, or, or lower or something, you know, that would actually be a lot safer. Um, we have a lot more work to do. Uh, whatever the agreement is, it's not going to be enough. Um, and it's a tragic reality, but it's the case. Okay, cool. Thanks, Benny Boy. Appreciate it. Yep.